why didn't you call? Let us know you were coming. Well, it was a spur of the moment thing, I guess. I had to get down to Houston to see somebody, so I thought I'd surprise you. Yeah, well, you certainly did that. <laughs> Now, how long can you stay? I fly out at 11.30. Tonight? Oh, you're kidding. Afraid not. Mm. Oh, I love this part of Dallas. Such a beautiful smell in the air. Mmm, Jasmine. Mmm, money. Oh, Gwen. <laughs> Mystery man of yours. Terrible. <laughs> That's why I married him. <laughs> it was all a bit sudden, wasn't it? So what? Absolutely. Grab it while it's hot, I say. Your dad built this house. Yeah. House built by dreams, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Three years since the accident. Do you know I am not consciously aware of when I thought about it last? Oh, that is crazy. People who meant so much to life. A little time goes by and... I get sort of fuzzy around the edges. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring back a stack of bad memories. Hi. Is this a private party or can anyone join in? Now, you must be Gwen. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. You know, Kathy has told me so much about you. We expected you to be one of the bridesmaids. Aren't you joining us for a drink? Oh, I better not. The meeting's at six. Oh, that's right. Well, that's too bad. Gwen can only stay a few hours. Oh, I'm truly sorry. Well, I've been three months setting up the Darling Brothers. Well, that's one of the biggest old partnerships in town, Gwen. And if everything clicks into place, we could be right at the top of the tree. In one jump. Well, if your run's on late, I'll, I'll stay downtown, okay? You'll do whatever you want anyway. Hey, you mad at me? No. Mm. You sure? Sure. <laughs> Go get him, Tiger. Yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you, Gwen. And you. Even if it has to be such a rush. We'll catch up, I'm sure. Stay lovely, Chicken. I gotta go outside, give him a wave, bring some luck. <laughs> I'll get you that drink now. to set up the business. Appearances are real important here. Even if the rest of the world still thinks of Dallas as some sort of cow town. <laughs> Not me, honey. I'm from Sydney. We've still got kangaroos in the main street down there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, we ended up spending a lot more money than we wanted to. Let's get the offices looking good. It's a good investment. As long as Joe had the capital in the first place. Well, we had the money. Parents' insurance. Hold on. That doesn't sound like a we. That sounds like a you had the money. 
the difference? Hey, come on. Joe pays good interest on it. It's just a loan to get the business going. Well, Mr. Gardner, it's good to see you, sir. Any others coming right along? Others? What others might that be? Well, sir, I did hold the opinion that I was dealing directly with the Darling Brothers. That'd be a fact, yes, sir. But I have full capacity to act in their behalf. Full capacity. You bet. Now, ain't this here just a dinky little set of officers there, Billy Joe? Yes, sir, it is dinky. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, son. You present a good impression. Fine image, right, Billy Joe? Oh, yes, sir, fine image. Well, I, I surely hope it is more than that. Because I do believe I am presenting a fine product. Listen, boy. Don't you go try and peddling this old man a crock of bullshit. He ain't no more got a fine product here in this desk and get up and do the rumba and you know it. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, where the hell do you get off coming into my office and talking to me like that? Do that shit, boy. Number one is, this ain't your office. These walls belong to the Hallmark Realty Group. Hallmark Realty? And these items of furnishing come with the compliments of the Easy Rental Company. Easy Rental, yes, sir. And uh, as for this alleged alabaster ashtray, it's just as phony as you are. Yes, sir. Uh, now, listen, sir. So I rent space, so what? Everyone does. Well, I need to keep my capital liquid. I got no reason to tie it up. You ain't got no capital. You want me to tell you the story of your life, boy? <laughs> you tell him. You came from New Zealand originally. Your mother married a U.S. serviceman. Years later, you moved over here. Your daddy died. You lived off of your mother. And after you bled that poor woman for ever since she had, she ups and dies. No one rightly knows why, but you had the foresight, the amazing foresight, to see that the good woman was highly, I say, highly insured. Highly insured. Mr. Gardner, I would be careful if I were you. I could have you in court. <laughs> I'll tell you what, now let's leave us set aside the undisputable fact that you raise your capital by victimizing woman folks, and let's, uh, let's have a little look-see here at these wells that you're trying to sting us with. Oh, no, sir. No, there's no sting in it. No, sir, these things, these here are the real thing. Alamo Field, huh? That's a mighty emotive name around here. It bears investigation, that name. Does. A lot of investigation. You're right. And I have the geological reports right here. They are producing wells. Ah, uh, here we are. Alamo Field, previously SR number 37. Drilled out as dry as a witch's tit. <laughs> witch's tit. <laughs> Purchased by Oliver Investments, a two-bit company owned by, guess who? Well, there is, there is nothing illegal about speculative dealing in oil wells. I couldn't agree with you more, boy. But speculative dealing presenting fraudulent geologist reports quite another thing. Yes, sir. Now, you might be able to go home and tell your mom and your wife a bunch of lies, but not us. No, sir. Now, you did not put any money into this, sir. So just what the hell are you gonna do about it? We don't think we know. Now, we want you out of here in seven days' time. If you don't, I've been advised to tell you that we're gonna ride you right out of Texas on the rail. Do you understand what I'm talking about, boy? Ride on the rail. Right 
There's no need for you driving to the airport. I really can get a taxi, honestly. Oh, honestly, very stiff upper lip. <laughs> now, don't be silly. I can take you to the airport. OK, thanks. My pleasure. Next time, uh, try to spend a little more time with us, maybe two days instead of one. Last of the big spenders. Five hundred bucks says I get what I want. <laughs> this is a world of give and take. Anything you can give, I can take.
you been? Well, you know it, lover, at the office. Where else? Twenty questions. I took I took going to the airport tonight. Okay, good for you. On the way home I passed the uh, Alamo Motor Court. So? I saw your car there. Well, it's not possible. I was in a meeting all night. I telephoned your office. Then you made a mistake. There must be a hundred cars like mine in town. I looked in the window, Joe. In the bathroom window. I saw what you did to that girl. Oh. Oh. For God's sake, Joe. You cut her to pieces. Kath. He's away from me. Nobody knows. So we can just wait a few days and then quietly leave town. Start again someplace. I stopped off someplace, I had a few drinks. When I got here. You were dead. Virgil? Well, now that's why I was brave. To be terrified and still go on with it. It wouldn't be bravery if you were too dumb to be scared. And besides, we got us a confession that's gonna hold up. Where are your cups? They're uh... Oh, never mind, I found them. Here we are. X is tiny. Gonna happen to Joe. Well, now, I don't rightfully know. The lawyers these days can twist anything any which way they want to. But whatever it is, he's gonna be on the inside to the air conditioned Hades if I had my way. Now, Exactly had a chance to think. That's right. Hey, come on now, take a shot of this, huh? Try it. Hmm? Texas toddy. That's right, the original. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, that's terrible. 
Mm. Mm. You know, I always did think the tea bag killed the taste. <laughs> Do you think there's such a thing as a habitual criminal? You know, I, I mean somebody who can't help being a criminal. Well, now, I tell you, I ought to know I habitually lock them up. Why? Well, you think your husband has done this kind of thing before? Exactly thinking of it in that light. I was, uh, I was thinking more about myself. Uh, would you give me that again, honey? I, I lost the connection. Look, how many times have we met here? Officially, I mean, in the last twelve years. The last twelve years. Well, now, maybe. I don't know, three. Once when my parents were killed. And when Otis J. the Fourth wanted me to go bail for him. Now this. I like I seem to sort of collect them, don't I? Just hold on a minute now. You're building up fantasies in your head. You're taking coincidences and giving them more importance than God ever did intend. Now, you just listen to old Virgil Baker here. There is no such thing as a habitual victim. You hear me? I was there to help you. If only I'd stay with you. No, actually, I'm glad I found him. I mean, if I hadn't, who knows how long he would have kept. He's better off where he is. Locked away where he can't get at anybody else. Forever, I hope. Yeah. I hope. Gwen, I'm, uh, thinking of selling the house. I was wondering if I do. If I could uh, come and stay with you. That'd be great. I'd scad the room and get this a swimming pool and my own marina. <laughs> you haven't got a boat to put in it, do you? No, but I know plenty of guys that do. How about it? You gonna come? Well, I'd love to. I really would. Well, make sure you do this time. No more excuses. Listen, let me know when you make your arrangements. And Kathy, please look after yourself, okay? I will. And thanks for always being there, Gwen. The next time, could you call a little earlier? Everybody's wide awake in Sydney. Bye. How are you? Hey there, Sheriff. Can I sell you a horse today? You know, man, I think you're gonna need a bigger horse than that to lug me around. <laughs> you know, the closer I get to retiring, the more there is for me to retire. Oh, Sheriff, you'll never retire. Now, what would you do with yourself if you did? 
Well, now, I'll tell you, I, I had me in mind a little old place. You know, I thought I might train a few horses and nothing fancy. Well, anytime you want to look over this place, it's on the market. Well, you know, I've always liked this place ever since your daddy built it. And uh, I have been talking to your real estate man there, Sam Jackson. And if I wouldn't be out of line, I would like to make you an offer. Well, Sheriff Baker, if you go right on down to Sam Jackson's office, he certainly wouldn't be out of line at all. He'd be helping me out. Well, good deal. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Kathy, Kathy, this is Sheriff Baker. Oh, hey, hi, Sheriff. Listen, uh, if it's about the house... Never mind about the house. I won't tell you about your husband. Now, he just busted loose out of the state asylum. Escaped? How? Now, never mind how. What I want you to do is to get in your car and come down here as quick as you can. Now, I'm sending some officers over to your house just in case he shows up. In case? Well, of course he'll show up. Kathy, listen to what I'm saying. Just come down here as soon as you can.
got a knife. Okay, now, Ms. McCray, my partner and I'll check outside and radio for a backup. You stay here with Officer. Oh, Casey. Well, no, not another minute. You get me out of here. Whoa, now, hold on there. He's outside, you're inside. Officer Casey can look after you just fine. Lock the door after this case. He can't be too far in his arm. Fletcher and I'll stake here and wait for a backup. It's on its way, and don't try to be heroes. Don't worry, Sheriff. We'll stick to each other like glue. Rally out. Heroes, us? He's got to be kidding. Well, there you go, Kathy. I told you, we got nothing to worry about. And we'd hear him if he tried to get in. And we got the guys out front. Plus, this little fella here. We're cool, okay? Yeah, well, my legs feel like they belong to someone else. Whoever it is, it's just run a marathon on them. There, you sit down over here. I'll make us both some coffee. Just relax. You can yell at me through the door. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't understand how they could put him someplace where he could just walk out of so easily. He didn't just walk. He killed two wardens on the way and went over a barbed wire fence like it wasn't there. Where do you keep your coffee, honey? Oh, Ed, the pantry by the back door. I had a call from a friend of mine. I'm thinking of going to stay with her in Australia. Australia? Yeah. Weren't they all criminals or something? No, so what's the difference? After tonight, a plain old straightforward cannibal will be a piece of cake. They speak English there. I could get a job and, uh, you know, what do you think? Officer? You think it's a good idea? Officer? Can you hear me? Officer! Officer Casey! Officer? Officer Casey? Officer Casey, where are you? Officer? Casey, this is your idea of a joke. Not very funny.
stand the thought of him still being out there somewhere, Cheryl. Oh, I just don't want to be in the same town or the state or the same country as he is in place behind bars. All right, Solid Andy. bars. Oh, it's bad enough being on the same planet. Look, honey, you're not going to be on the same planet. You're going to Australia. Will you stop worrying? Come on, get on the plane, have yourself a drink. Order yourself a Texas toddy. If they don't know how to make it, show them. And don't forget the tea bag. <laughs> Come on. Cheer I up, just huh? want you to find him, all right? We are going Please to find him. Stop I, him. I promise you. I don't want him to hurt anybody I else. I promise you quit worrying. Okay. Take care of that house. I will. Take care of you. Yeah. Goodbye. It belongs to this guy. It used to be his parents. They left it to him, along with about a million bucks. He rents it out just enough to cover the rates. If he likes you, you're in. Simple. Well, you really lucked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a mansion and a millionaire all to yourself? What's he like? Well, you'll find out. He'll be around to meet you with the rest of the troops. I told them I was having a house guest. Did you tell them who? No. I was Kathy Wills before I married Joe. I think I'd like to be Kathy Wills again. Hello, Philip. Oh, hello. Everything all right, Gwen? As well as can be expected. You having fun? I'm getting a drink for Kathy. Well, good for you. I'm going to check on supper. Okay. Come on. Funny one, that Philip. I didn't think he'd show up. Well, he's not what one would call socially mobile. <laughs> no, it's a shame, isn't it? He's got all that money and he doesn't know how to enjoy himself. All that money? He's practically got the seat falling out of his pants. Well, unless I'm mistaken, he probably owns the factory that makes those pants. And this place. He's the landlord. Oh, Gwen South Sea's millionaire. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> You'd think they'd have different names for different things. I didn't realize that there were so many different sorts of vermouth. Vermouth. I like this one. Dry. Would you like me to make it so you'll know exactly how I like it for next time? Okay. Hmm? I'm afraid you'll think I'm a terrible duffer. A what? Duffer. You know, how sort of clumsy person. Oh, not at all. Do you think you can uh, cut me a slice of lemon? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Well, you know, I suppose I, uh, I have to thank you for my living here. Indirectly, at least. Ted tells me you own all this. Yes, well, not that I set out to. It's a sort of genetic thing, really. My father was a great empire builder. I don't think it's a particularly hereditary trait. <laughs> <laughs> Good health, kind sir. Thanks. Supper time. Come on, everyone. It's on the table. Are you joining us for supper? Um, no. No, thank you. Um, I've got something on the stove at home. Might burn. I'd better run. Well, maybe we'll see you later, then. Yes. I'll certainly see you later.
Um, when you settle in, get over your jet lag. Uh, maybe I could show you around Sydney. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I'd love it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll see you later. Good night, Rick. Bye, baby, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby, cradle and all. Rick's been married, hasn't he? Yes. Did you ever meet his wife? Once. Once was enough. <laughs> what was wrong with her? I don't know. I guess we just didn't click. She played around a lot. Oh, really? Okay, okay. But I'm not married to Ted yet. That's what this whole going away thing's all about. Anyway, Rick tried hard, but it just wasn't going to hang together. She got the house and the kids and just about everything they owned. I don't want to take the risk of that happening to me. Or the risk that you took when... Sorry. It's all right. I didn't know there was a risk. Kathy, all those things in the papers, I mean... He didn't really do all that, did he? They must have exaggerated. I don't know, Gwen. I didn't read your papers. But I doubt that uh, they could have exaggerated. Texas. Oh, Sheriff. Well, it's nice to hear your voice. Have you found anything? Well, now, you know, I got a report here from the San Francisco police. They found something that might have belonged to your husband. Now, did he have a kind of a, I don't 
don't know, kind of a signet ring with an inscription on it, sort of a black stone with an agate like on it. Yeah, a malachite. It, it comes from the slopes of Mount Vesuvius. Well, damned if it does. Now, what about that inscription? It says, till death, Kathy. Very appropriate. Well, Mrs. McRae, it is my melancholy duty to advise you that your husband has met with an untimely end. You mean it? He's dead? As a mackerel. Well, do I have to identify him or anything? Well, I don't believe you can, but look, I'll send you a full report on it. But believe me, they don't come any deader than this turkey. Oh, bless you, Sheriff. Bless you. Well, you can make any other kind of arrangements you want about that. Look, Kathy, this long distance, like I told you, and uh, just uh, you tell your friend that it's all over. Oh, listen, when you coming back, your horse has been asking for you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You still keep looking after him, Sheriff. I don't know when I'm ever going to come home. It's just so relaxed and oh, calm and nice here. I, I don't know, Virgil. Well, now, look, honey, uh, you all take care of yourself here. Yeah? And uh, you just stay in touch, and I'll do the same, huh? Bye. Okay, Sheriff. Thank you for calling. Thanks a lot. Kathy? Kathy? Oh. I'm sorry to wake you. Oh, Ted. Oh, what time is it? Gwen's not here. Well, she said something about going away. What, at eight in the morning? Eight in the morning? Oh, you woke me at eight in the morning? Oh. Kathy? Oh. Kathy? Oh, I'm sorry. I must have had a little too much brandy last night. Whew. Did you check the pool? No. It's not there. Oh, do you think your car is gone? I don't know. I'll go and check. Hi, Philip. Oh, hello. Have you been gardening at this hour of the day? I didn't wake you, did I? I like to get most of it done before the heat of the day. Mind you, I'm a bit behind this morning. What with Gwen. Gwen? What about her? I drove her to the airport. She said she was going away for a couple of weeks. She thought you could use the car, Kathy. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose I could, if I really knew my way around. Now, just a minute. Where did she go? Beg your pardon? Where did she go? I'm afraid I don't know. I did ask her once, but she didn't answer. I didn't want to intrude. Well, 
The car's still there, but the engine's warm. Have I done something wrong? No, it's not you, Philip. Ted's just upset about Gwen. How about a cup of coffee? Well, if I'm not in the way... I have to say, I admire you very much. <laughs> I don't exactly feel very admirable right now. Oh, no, I don't mean that way. I mean, Gwen told me about your husband. Oh. I remember reading about it in the papers. I saw his picture a couple of times. He seemed such a, a normal sort of person. Yeah, well, most maniacs do. They don't exactly go through life with a uh, neon sign blinking, I'm a lunatic, pinned to their chest. Do they? No, I... I suppose not. Um, Gwen said he died. Yes. Look, I, I don't want to lose your friendship over this, but I'm not sorry. Philip, no one could be. He was an evil man. He deceived you and he did terrible things. I think people who do wrong things should be punished. They deserve retribution. An eye for an eye? Yes, I suppose that's what I mean. You know, most people tend to forget the rest of that quotation. Do you know it? An eye for an eye? A tooth for a tooth? A life for a life? Vengeance is mine. I shall repay, saith the Lord. That's the saith the Lord part that most people tend to forget. You know, I'm really not feeling very well. The coffee isn't helping any. I think I better call a doctor or something. Ooh. Will you excuse me? Look, I, I'm sorry. Have I offended you? No. Really, you haven't. What's wrong, Kathy? I went to the doctor today. I guess I should have gone sooner, but I've been putting it off, not wanting to face it, I suppose. Face what? I'm pregnant. Pregnant by that maniac of a husband of mine. I'm carrying his child. It's your child too, Kathy. You just gotta love him. I have my children tomorrow. And I wonder how you'd like to join us for the day. dinner together.
you very much. It was a pleasure. pleasure. Good night. Thank you. you. She hasn't any plans of leaving Sydney, has she? No. I suggest she doesn't. Nor you, Mr. Green. Look, you got my address. I'll be there. Or here. Good. Answer it. Kathy, please. Answer it. It might be the police. Kathy, it's me, Philip. I heard you had a bit of trouble up at the house. I saw the police. Yes, there was some trouble, Philip, but it's all over now. Everything's okay now. No, but, uh, Kathy, I really think I ought to come up there and, uh, and look after you. 
Actually, Philip, I was, uh, I was just gonna go to bed and everything day okay, okay yeah. really. Why don't you uh, get some sleep and I'll see you in the morning. Okay. I really think I should insist. Philip, uh, really, I'm perfectly all right. And you have a good night. be a bit off the air. I just can't stand him sneaking around all the time. It drives me crazy. Hey, Philip. You think Philip's got a pot plantation somewhere? A what? Pot plantation. <laughs> No, I just saw him running around the garden with a shovel. Oh, no, he told me himself. He likes to get most of his gardening done before the heat of the day. No, I was, oh, I was pretty crummy last night. I thought you were terrific. I'm talking about Philip. You know, he does mean well. Would you mind if I invite him for dinner tonight? Sort of make up for being short with him last night. That's why you pick up these dinglings. You don't know when to walk away. Would you mind? Mm. Really? Just for my conscience sake. Okay. <laughs> sure. Thanks. Mm. Now, how do you like your eggs? Cooked. Cooked. I think that uh, maybe you could go and get Philip. Everything's ready. I think we should eat now. Yeah, he's probably reading his plans a bedtime story. <laughs> okay. Kelly's panicking. Dinner's ready? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Of course, but uh, I have something to show you first. Please. Yeah, through here, Rick. Take a look. Hey, Philip. Now, uh, Rick. Listen to me. On the bench in front of you, you'll find a cassette. I'm sure you know how to operate the machinery. I want you to watch that cassette. And Rick, don't touch the door handle again. Next time, the result could be fatal. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, of course you can come. 
come over. If you hurry up, I'll even feed you dinner. <laughs> All right, great. I'll see you when you get here, Ted. Bye. doing here? Huh? Philip, you creep. I was ready to go and then I'm gonna get you for this. It's really sweet of you to bring me flowers from the garden, Philip. You always do such nice things. Uh, where's Rick? Uh, he said to tell you he might be half an hour or so. Half an hour or so? What do you mean? Something interested him on the television. Well, that's ridiculous. He knows dinner's ready now. He was most apologetic. I suppose we'll have to eat without him. Bet you're hungry. Hope you like soup. Excuse me. very susceptible to drafts. As you know, I have a set diet. I haven't eaten soup since... since my mother went. Where did your mother go, Philip? To heaven. At least if God is to be believed, she did. God? Very nice. Very nice indeed. I must vary my diet to include soup. What did God say to you, Philip? He didn't speak to me directly, of course. She confessed. She repented of her sins, every filthy one of them. And then she died. It was for the best. Missing out on this good soup. I should give him a call.
I forgot to put these in water. How silly. What, uh, what happened to Gwen, Philip? Oh, Gwen went away. Yes, indeed. To heaven? No. No, she was a filthy slut. Cavorting with everyone and anyone. I didn't think you were like that, Kathy. That you let Rick do all those things to you. I tried. All night I tried to tell myself that you were lonely, that you needed comforting. But I was there, Kathy. I could have comforted you. You didn't need Rick to do all that for you. I think I love Rick. It's all right with people you love, Philip. You thought you loved your husband. You killed Joe. I think I made a mistake killing your husband. He knew you better than I. He must have known you were just the same as all the others. I should have let him dispose of you. Uh, don't touch that, Kathy. Don't you think the bathroom? Your husband liked bathrooms. I think you should take a shower. The bath would be nicer, but we don't have one. Why are you doing this, Philip? I won't tell anybody about anything I know about you. I promise. I think I can take your word for that, Kathy. Take a shower. Please, take a shower. I'm pregnant. I... Don't you remember an eye for an eye? Huh? You wouldn't want to harm an unborn child, Philip. God wouldn't like that. <laughs> All over. It's okay, Rick. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be Ready, Rick? Yeah. Mm. You know, I've decided. If it's a girl, I'm gonna name her Gwen. Yeah. And if it's a boy, Virgil. Virgil? After Sheriff Baker. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get you home all to myself. Mm. Me too. Mm.